Welcome to my second tutorial where I'll be franken spriting. This is a simple way of making sprites. I'm recreating this right here. I'm not going to get into gore yet, especially for Mugen, as you can see. On some of these edges, there's transparency edges or anti aliasing, smooth edges, blur edges, whatever you want to call it. That's not something you can import in Fighter Factory or whatever program you use to make Mugen characters. Same with this staff. You see these smooth, distinct edges do not exist in my custom weapon. I used my resize method to make this. I'll show you a quick and dirty way to make a weapon right after I make the character that would be Mugen compatible using the resize method, but not the smooth looking weapon. So I make my new image. I'm probably going to use green. If you don't know what tools I'm using, I suggest you get out of here and look at tutorial one, which explains everything I'm doing. If I do something new, I'll try to remember to tell you what I'm doing. I use a lot of shortcuts because I've been using this since I don't know, the year 2000, so yeah, <clears throat> I know my way around the program. So, inspect the, inspecting the sprite, you see Kung Lao's legs, this little cloth here, is actually from Kano, I'll just custom make it today. This is custom made, I'm not going to make use Kano's ammo belt, I, I don't like that design choice anymore. I'll show you how I made the glowing eyes. As you can see, the glow goes beyond his original head. I'll show you how to do that for Mugen so the edge doesn't exist in the sprite. Obviously, this is Mortal Kombat 2 Ninja up here. So let's go get our guy. That's Scorpion's win pose. If you didn't recognize that, I don't consider you a true fan. Let's select all, hit control, deselect the background, uh, and it's not doing his bushy eyebrows, so I hit shift to reselect. The shift brings that plus sign next to your tool. Now, control E pastes in your current image, control V pastes a new image on the outside. So when you're working in an image, remember that control E will bring it in here. So he has this arm that's different. So we'll use this tool, the freehand selection, to get rid of this arm. Control X, I use to delete. Now that goofy hand, arm, whatever, is here. So we'll select that and deselect the background and move his body on top of it. Now, when you're editing, you zoom in with the mouse wheel. I always go back to 100% to see how it looks, because that's how everyone who will be seeing your characters will see it. So I'm constantly zooming in and out while I'm editing. I hope it doesn't make you motion sick. Get rid of his legs, because he doesn't use scorpion legs. I decided to make Kung Lao. I make him have Kung Lao's legs. I delete that whole thing. Let's go get Kung Lao's legs. I think I used this one. And I'll show you how I... It looks really grainy here and you'll see in my costume the graininess is not there. I used the blur smudge tool. Yeah, I know I said my tutorial I don't use that and I don't anymore but I did back in the day when I made this. So I'll just go ahead and colorize it here. Shift L brings that up. Don't ask me how to get to it to the menu. From the menu I don't know. Zero zero. If you're coloring things in the future you can always drag this down here if you don't know the color code. This saturation just 
asks us how much to saturate. This is very colorful, this is less colorful, but we're doing gray, so 0, 0 for me. Now, I'm just going to use the same like twice, so I only have to edit it once, so I'll be doing something like this. Now, in the original image, I left this black cloth from his costume, but I'm not going to be lazy this time. <clears throat> I'll show you how I colored it in. Uh-oh. Mess that up. All right, let's darken his pants. Shift B brings up the brightness contrast. The negative makes darker. The positive makes lighter. I don't really use contrast because I just don't use it right now. Minus 50, maybe a little bit more, 75. Well, maybe 55 was fine. I'll use my brush to darken it later. So let's use the brush. Make it a little bit bigger so it covers more of a space. Make it black. Ugh, too strong. Change the opacity to maybe 20. And there we go. Now I used the soften tool to get rid of this grainy look. And be careful that you don't do it on the edges. Look what happens. It's sampling the green edge. And that won't fly in Mugen. So I'll control Z. Make sure you make the brush size small enough. Maybe increase the opacity, which is the same thing as the intensity. And try to stay away from the edges so it doesn't screw it up and make it green. If it does, just colorize it back to gray. So, uh oh, colorize. I guess it doesn't do it on the edges. It's a transparency. So, don't do it on the edge. Here, we'll just smooth it out. So now we zoom out again at 100. His pants don't look grainy. Because that's how I made this. It looks kind of stupid in here. But this is all part of the tutorial. Uh, we got rid of his socks, so I'm going to get rid of it here too. Just brush it out. Black socks for black cybot. Now I paste Control E, then Control M to mirror it. If the distance of the legs don't look right, that's okay. We fix as we go. I guess that would look fine. So this part of his leg's missing, so let's fill it in. Just kind of pretend like it would be there. Just select that F for the fill tool. Let's just color it that color. I know it doesn't look right. So let's select our sprite. Deselect this background. Now go back to the brush, which is the letter B keyboard and hit control so you can sample this color and just kind of draw this in make sure that opacity is low so it doesn't happen like this you wanted a gradual change I'm probably gonna end up darkening these pants some okay this looks bad I guess it's because of the cloth. Who cares if the... Uh, I want the original size of the cloth, so I'm using a little cheat here. Uh, God damn it, it's not on the same layer. Alright, I'll just draw it from scratch. So, follow my mouse and look down on the bottom right. It has these coordinates. This is where your cursor is on this image. It also tells you the image resolution, 400 by 255, 16 million colors. And when you're using this selection tool, new coordinates come up showing the size or the dimension of this selection and also the position. So I want to find out how big I made this cloth. And the bottom numbers say 17 by 32. 
So, since it's on a new layer, I can technically just draw this and right-click and drag it out here. I use the filler. So I'm going to color sample here. And just redraw this cloth. So I select here. Now I hit Control and deselect the inner part. I use the fill. Now I use, just make this a little bit more of a darker color on the inside. This should be black. And I'll just put it here. It looks terrible right now. Bear with me. So, his legs just don't look right. I think they're too high. delete this because I'm just going to use the same leg twice anyway. I'm just trying to make the legs look normal. I think they were too skinny. Alright, that looks look like a little normal now. I don't think those were the legs I originally used. Because this, this just looks like shit. I need to find it. Maybe I used this leg. So I'm going to use this again. And replace this foot. Color it back. Now it actually looks like a leg should look. Get rid of that black sock or white sock. All right. Now it doesn't look so bad. Sorry if I don't have patience today. This is the third time I'm doing this tutorial. The first time I was talking and my microphone wasn't selected. So I have to do it all over again after my kids were interrupting me too. All right. This wasn't the same leg, so I'm sorry if it looks different. I want his legs a little darker, so I can shift B and make it maybe t minus 10, minus 5 now. There, it's not so gray looking. These legs kind of look like he was halfway squatting. This actually makes it look like he's standing. So let's edit just the yellow part now. And the easiest way I do this is make a duplicate copy, and I'll just, when I'm done, I'll put it on top. I'm going to get rid of his arm because I don't want to edit his arm. Getting rid of his skin. His mask was a lighter gray, so I don't want to make it dark black like the main costume. Now, this magic wand tool, I'll select this. I'm going to put it in a new image so it doesn't select the other colors. I'll 
Increase the tolerance, make sure it's not contiguous. Get rid of the existing black color. And select these little gray ones in here. Color this gray. Decrease the brightness a bunch of times. That's too much. I'll do it about there. I don't want to keep doing that because it makes it too dark. So I'm going to use the brush now. That was too... Oh, just darken up the top here a little bit. So I'm going to copy and paste it here. And you can see these little brown and red spots from the original sprite. We'll just color or select around here and make it all gray with the color eyes. So now here I smoothed out the costume. So I'll go here and select soften and remember not to touch the edges. So I'm going to lower this opacity so it's not so intense of a smudge. Maybe a little higher. Maybe I was right at 22. So now I'm smoothing out his costume so it doesn't have that grainy look. And there he is. So I left the grainy in the middle here. I'm going to smooth it out here just some so it's a little consistent. Zoom out to check it. I don't like the way these extra pixels look, so I'll have to get rid of it. Now his mask was a dark gray to match the dark gray here and here. Shift B, Shift B. Colorize. I use my paintbrush to darken it up some. That's good enough. Now I want to darken these pixels here a little bit. Make sure you deselect the background because if you don't, that happens. So deselect the background. Darken up these pixels. There we go. Ninja. So this doesn't look like a cloth. No personality. So the clone tool. I don't know if I covered this, but you right click here and it'll draw in here. So I just want to sample this area here and make it look like it's an actual cloth. Oh, it's so cheap and dirty trick. Now here, I want these edges a little smoothed out, and I don't want to blur it, so I'll copy around here. Copy and paste as a new image. Resize it to 100%. No, no, wait, I'm in 200% to double it. Just using Smart Resize. Now I will resize it to 50%. too bright so now I'm going to darken it a little I'm just gonna sample this color I should have used this mask we'll fix it so it doesn't look like just a box in a minute I'm gonna do the belt now. So now I just, you know, it looks bad. I'm just getting the color there. I will use the burn tool to darken it up more on the edge. not be exactly the same. Uh, it doesn't look good. So there's this bell 
out. Adding a little bit more shading detail than I did in the original one. And here too, since the belt is on top of that, creating a slight fold. That's a little too strong. I'm using the dodge and burn again. A little belt around him. It doesn't look so flat and plain looking as that. The edge could be fixed more here. But I am not a perfect artist. If you saw how I draw on paper, you'd laugh at me. So there are some things I just don't know how to do in terms of realistic drawing. And it probably carries over into my fakes, especially when it comes to lighting and shading. So I only know what how to do what looks good to me, but I'm sure a real artist can point out my flaws in a heartbeat. Just kind of darken these edges a little bit, make it not as an even color looking. There are some pixels in this that bother and stick out like a sore thumb, so I'm going to get rid of this bright random pixel here, darken up down here. In the middle, a little here, a little there. Let's make the glowing eyes. So you select the whole sprite and you deselect the background. Use the picture tube, and there's this neon green here. If you wanted to draw a butterfly, there's your butterfly ninja. Anyway, make a new layer. And what this does, so you can see, is this neon does this bright lightsaber looking effect. But we don't want it so huge. I only want it on my ninja. So let me do that again. I want a new layer, Alt-L, uh, in case you missed that, new layer, 100%. It'll tell you you're in layer 2, which is called Roster 2. Hit J for that, no, hit I for that neon thing. It was 10, so I'll just click a bunch of times till I like the glow look on his eyes. We'll make it 130 by 200, which does that color, or you can use a slider if you don't know what color code it is. Now to make it more of an intense blue, I'm hitting Shift B to darken it and recolorizing it. So now you can see that it's not as bright as that. I don't want it to be, but I want his eyes to be white, a little bit more white in here. He needs more of an intensity glow, but you get the point. His eyes are blue now. The, that right eye looks terrible. So I just copied and pasted because it's a new layer. Uh, that's too intense. That's good enough. Alt L M D. Eyes go. I cut and pasted them back here, so now they're on the same layer. So he's looking all right for a Mugen character, not for a fake. Now let's draw this. I'll give him a actual scythe or skith or however you pronounce that sickled edge weapon. I'm going to use point to point to draw the stick. It'll come out about here maybe. Let me start over. So from here, nope, from here to here about, it'll hold it. In. So I'm just drawing the outline. I'm going to work in it in a new 
Damn. Well, I shouldn't have done it that way. Let's do it from down here only. It's not going to be a perfect angle. As I said, this is my third time doing this today. I want a little skinnier. That's way too thick. So I'm hitting Control to deselect. Control will always deselect something. So that'll be a stick. Let's go find a brown color to make it over here. Use the filler F. Now, you'll look at here and you'll see the moon is casting a light on the stick and the darker side of the stick is on the opposite side. So we will recreate that. So this resize method is how I put small details into small areas. It's a little bit of a cheat. So stick needs to be a little bit bigger, maybe about there. So I'm just copying and pasting. Uh, whatever. We'll just make it that tall. Or whatever. I'll, I'll use that height. Let's increase by 400%. You'll see that fucked it up. So Control Z and make sure you're using a pixel resize. Now to smooth out these edges, we once again use free hand selection, point to point. I'm going to draw from this corner, move my mouse down to the image to this corner. Then I'll move over up here, click here, and all the way back up, clicking here and here. And right click, and it'll do that whole selection. Use the brush, make it a huge brush, make it all the way to 100, and fill it in. Now it's smoother. But when I resize it down to 25% to the original size, you'll see it went back. But if you use Smart Resize, it'll give you those edges. That's no good for Mugen. So make sure you use Pixel Resize if you're making a Mugen sprite. But let's get these details in here. That would otherwise be a pain in the ass to edit in a small image. We're going to do it in this huge image. And how I do that is I select this. Let me make it a darker brown. So I'm just going to select this brown so it's the same color. I will use this dodge tool. And I will increase the opacity of maybe 33. And put that shiny part light reflection that the moon would have caused or whatever light source may be happening it just makes it look more realistic so this is a pain to do so I'll leave it up to you to do it perfectly in your own sprite but right now I'm just doing it so you can see how general ideas gets done it, it doesn't look good but the perfectionist in me wants to keep trying uh, control control z i'm just undoing everything starting over it's so hard the problem i'm having is i don't uh, i'm doing this i'm not making a straight line i'm sure there's probably some smart way of doing it but I don't know right now. So that's just the light reflection. I'll right click with the same tool and make it darker. You probably can't see, but I'm making it darker by right clicking on this edge, leaving a little of the brown still in the middle, the original color, all the way up to the top of the stick. I'm probably missing some spots. I am not trying to be perfect at the moment. So if you resize this, it still doesn't look exactly the same. It's too light. I may darken it by 10. But whatever. So let's put some irregularities in this wood. Because what piece of wood looks like this? So 
in the brush there's this presets here you can change the shape of your brush I'm gonna use the marble one find a different color brown change the opacity so it's not so strong but I'll leave it 100 so you can see what it does it does this you see it just adds a little bit more detail to your sprite Now it doesn't look good when you're looking at it here, but when I resize it, oh god, that's too strong. When I resize it, all the weirdness goes away. I probably shouldn't have used orange for my color. It kind of ruined it. Let me get a better brown a sample here. I should have probably done this before. I added the lighting. So smart resize probably will look better. Looks like I should have used a brighter light reflection, so I'm gonna do it again. Just make it, I'll just leave it 33. Yeah. There you can kind of see it better. A new layer so I can cut out. It's kind of too thick. This pole is too thick. I don't like the way it looks. Ugh, I'll just leave it the way it was. Now, of course, it's in his fingers. So you have to delete that part so it looks like it's actually in his hand. When you're making a stick, uh, the more detail you spend on this huge image, the better it'll look when you resize it. I just don't want to do this again. I'm sorry. I'll leave the artist in you to perfect it. So, once again, I'm going to draw the sickle weapon. So I use freehand selection. Do it about here and just draw the sickle weapon. This doesn't look that great. So now I'll fill that in with a gray color. the quick and dirty way. If you're doing a sprite sheet, you don't want too much detail unless you have that much patience. I don't. This is the, the dodge and burn tool here I'm using on this blade. So the more time you take, the better it'll look. I am done for today. So there's my sickle weapon. It's too dark on the bottom, so I'll just lighten it back up again. Yeah, it looks bad, but you get the point. Let's just finish this sucker up.
this logo, the Brotherhood of the Shadow. Copy and paste. Now to get rid of this white stuff, uh, just select the red in the middle, contiguous off. So it selects all the red. Color it, control L, zero, 200, darken it up a bit maybe. Resize it to how much? Let's say 12 by 27. Uh, this is on percent, change it back to pixels, 12 by 27. Uh, put this on smart resize. And paste it in there. Maybe make it darker. That should be all right. There's the first Rankin sprite. The quick and dirty way of making a new sprite. I don't want to go into much detail in this second tutorial. I will save the advanced stuff from my resize method because that is how I get a lot of pretty details into a sprite. This is part two of Franken spriting. I'm going to use Shang Tsung to create Quan Chi. I always use Shang Tsung to make Quan Chi because he has good sprite positions for sorcerers, obviously. Uh, I'll probably use green again. Maybe a darker green. Making my new layer here. So, uh, I should know how Quan Chi looks by now, but it's always nice to have a reference right there in front of you so you can look at it while you're editing. So I'll just resize them down and put them as just right there. So he does not have yellow pants, so the first thing... Well, first let's make him have a, a new pose, since this is supposedly a Franken sprite. I guess one hand can be down there. I don't like these awkward looking pixels. I'll get rid of that finger from the back hand. Find another hand. Like he's doing some cool move. I could use that. Like his hands there. I guess he's doing a skull throw. Yeah, we'll do that. Goofy looking skull throw. We'll fill in the rest of his arm with my brush, change the preset back, I'll probably use fill. Don't worry about the color now, we fix that later. Whatever. His arm should be in line with this hand, so we'll end up drawing even more of his arm. I'm going to make it this color, so I don't forget. Alright, you'll do a skull throw. We won't need the head or his hair. 
because Shang Tsung or Quan Chi does not have that. But I will keep his head. I will make it bright because he has... Well, I should get rid of this hair because Quan Chi is bald. And his skin is white, so I'll increase that to make it white. He has black there, so I will just make it his that part of his hand, that part of his arm rather, dark. First make it gray, darken it, maybe minus a hundred. We'll fix it, make it look good later. Basically, I'm going to color the body the way it should be and then start editing. It should be more, uh, maybe more green. Darken it up. It's too much saturation, too little. Just trying to get the color right. Too green. Still too green. Probably should just be darker. Good enough for for this. This pants. We'll make all that black armor stuff later. He's already looking like Quan Chi. We barely did anything. I just make this whole thing that color. We're gonna have to edit out some of his muscles because unless he's wearing a tight, tight shirt, you're not gonna see his muscles through the shirt. His ribs, whatever. Oops. It's a brown belt that goes over his belly button. So we will make that brown. Since I have my image here, I'll sample his colors to make my life easier. Probably too. Control Z because I'm undoing everything I just did. Just want to get the shape correct. Probably boring to watch because there's a lot of trial and error. I think that may be a little too thick. So he is black on that part. He does not have a sash hanging down like like Shang did. So I'm going to delete that part of his leg. So this black part here, I don't know what to call that, but it comes to down to about here, and it covers almost his whole side of the leg, maybe up to the front, maybe this whole part will have to be black, 
So just make it gray. Use the brush. Make it a black color brush. I'll add detail to it later. Fix that sash. Kind of has a fold up here. It actually comes down to his knee, so that was all a mistake. So it kind of hangs down here about. So this whole thing's black. I wish I had a better picture to see how this reacts. We'll find it out. I need good reference images. Okay, so in this version you can still see some of his clothing here. Maybe I will fix that later or now. I know it doesn't look pretty, it doesn't matter. So we'll make this goes all the way up to his knee. Some of his thigh is still showing. I'll just do it up to here. So this shin guard, as you can see on the side, some of his pants still shows. So we'll have to remember that. So I'll make that that part. Color that black. Deselect the background make it black. Make that teal. We'll, make, we'll fix it up later. I don't like editing in this background color. I'll probably use dark red now so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. I don't like red. Maybe this is good, just a little darker. That's better. So again, this leg has black from the shin guard. little spot that his leg that shows because of the strap. I guess there's a strap on the bottom so it should show more of his leg. So I'll have to fix the other leg too. I'm just gonna move this. dark up here shouldn't have selected up here so it looks like there's some some more green that you could see from this shoe maybe I should never sized it yeah if you zoom in here, his sock is green. So we'll need to make a little bit of a sock. Not green, but teal. Ah, oh, damn it. Just deselect the background.
It looks bad now. We'll add the details later. To fix this leg. So he has that black thing there. Shang Tsung just happens to have it too, so it's less editing I have to do. Let's make it gray. Fix it so it looks better. I'm using the brush again. Probably should come out more to about down here. Make that gray, forgot one. Darken it up a bit. going with what I just did. I'm using the right code here. So now I'm drawing a front of this costume, that black part. This goes around his arm. So this part's black up here. Darken that some after deselecting the background. Maybe I should make my brush the correct color. sticks out. Now let's fix that arm. We could draw it ourselves or we could go back to a sprite where he's punching and that's less work you have to do because it's already drawn for you. So color it, make it dark, color it again. So I'll use a new layer so I can just erase the part that doesn't belong.
to merge it down. There. Should be darker though. A little bit darker, but not too darker. I think this should be more in the blue snow. Nope, I was right. His arm is bending in such a weird way. So this goes all the way to his elbow. So this has to be black all the way to his elbow. His, this looks... weird. Like his form is too small. I don't like how this looks as far as the human anatomy is concerned, but I'm just going to stick with it. I'm not here to teach human anatomy. So darken this up. Darken this up. Oh yeah, his hands are white because he has white skin. Maybe brighten it up a little bit. She almost said Shinnok. Looks like Quan Chi. Now, I don't want to be able to see all of this muscle definition through a shirt. So we're going to have to blur some of the edges of his muscle out. So it's not so obvious. Or smudge. I guess I do use smudge more than I thought. still see that. This has some cloth folds in it, so I'll artificially draw those by using my brush, sampling a darker color, making sure that PC is not too strong, and just pretending like there's some folds, just drawing random lines. And I'll use a brighter color later to do on top of those. Do all that. I'm just gonna finish doing my smudge first. Problem here is this muscle definition. So I'm going to use a different color to get rid of it. Oh, shoot, I'm not even on the brush tool. It's okay if I go on the belt a little bit. I still need to fix this part here, this armor of his. black ok 
considering how much time this is taking, I may not go into perfecting the sprite. But looking at the material, this is a belt. So I take my color sample and I just start drawing the belt a little bit darker on the top and on the edge. Zooming in and out to make sure it still looks normal. And I can't see that great now with this background color. I need to really find something that will work here. Maybe this is better. No conflicting colors. So I want to see what his so these stupid little dots here, whatever those, make it gray, brighten it up, and use my little, I need my dodge to give it a more of a metallic look to it. Oh, I should pay attention to what I'm doing. There's two on top of one another. I'm about to use my resize method to draw this out. Because I'm just better at it. That way. See it's in the original image it's darker in the middle, lighter on the outside, so we want to kind of replicate that. So I use my dodge and shine up the outside more than the this is a little too strong. So why it's good to have a reference image so you can see what you're trying to create and kind of mimic it. So I really don't know what the back end of his belt looks like. Everything's always showing the front. And that's a terrible screenshot. So I'm just going to leave it be. I resized it back down. I'm going to gray that out and see if it looks good. And it really doesn't. This is probably too bright. Just going to darken it, but lighten this up. Make it gray. I need to see him on a real background. This helps me more so than any background ever would. Any background color. He's okay. Not perfect, but he's all right. So this comes in down at an angle. 
then this is not. So this should be skinnier here. So I'm making that skinnier. I don't like how this is so flat. So since it's in the inside of the sprite, you can soften the edges here, increase the opacity. So, so it's more of a smooth transition instead of that cut look it has. I don't know how to explain it, but I'm just going on the edges and smudging it a little. We're going to have to draw that big thing around his neck over here. And his spikes, I guess they start at the top and go forward. So you probably won't see the spike that's his hand is hiding. I'll do the legs last since they're the most annoying thing to do. So he has two spikes on his arm. If you want to add that little red dot, we can. So just find a red color. Make your pick your brush size one. I mean, are you really gonna see that in the game? If you want to make it bigger, suppose you could. Can I see it? Barely, but if you want that little tiny detail, feel feel free. So his spikes are gonna look ugly, but they'll look like spikes. If this were a, a fake picture where I don't care about blurred images, I'd use my resize method and make it look smooth and sexy. But I can't have blurred images in Megan, so this is the further back is the bigger spike. Just make that gray. Maybe a little bit bigger. So I'm just copying and pasting the same spike on top of it. Why draw it twice? And it needs more of a curve. So I'll delete these few pixels. This pixel. Nope, that looks bad. Maybe it can stay for that one. So it's not just one boring color. We will use my Dodge. And I just brighten up this edge and this edge and darken a little bit in the inside of the curve. So it's just not just one color. It looks so lazy. So it looks a little bit better. Now we do this arm. I don't want to draw it again, so I'll copy and paste, rotate it left 90 degrees, and that won't work, so I have to redraw it. So I probably won't even see the spike that's down here, maybe by a little bit, if you want to get all fancy and accurate, but I don't, so I'm just not even going to draw it. Uh, maybe I do. Maybe I will. I don't have to draw the whole thing. So once again, I'm adding some dodge to it. Make a new layer, paste this here. Delete that since you're not supposed to see it. And it looks weird here. So 
I'm going to sample that and add another pixel on that. I'm feeling this is up too high. Maybe drop that down a little bit. Which means I'll have to move this a little bit more. <clears throat> I'm just not liking this arm still. I really don't. Oh, too much. So his cloth is kind of folded into here. So you want to replicate that by darkening the pixels close to his arm guards, whatever you call that. I'm using the dodge and burn tool again. Darken the edge here. Do this. Fix this. It's just a square sitting there. I don't like it. So darken here too. A little bit on top. Not darken, but burn. It's the tool's name. No, his arms don't look so silly, and there's this random pixel here that bugs me. Let's fix his leg. I don't like the way this looks. If you wanted to change the amount of where the light is coming on the leg, you just darken down here. That'll change that. If you want to add more light on top, you can. If you don't want to make it look too shiny like it's plastic, let me select that. And he has folds in here. So if you pay attention to fold, there's the dark, then there's the light, then there's the dark. That's how you draw a fold. So I'll use my, I'll probably use the brush. I'll select a dark color. I'll select a light color. Make it not two, maybe 11. Draw the light. Oops, not even on the brush. Draw the light color. That's too strong. Light color, dark color, dark. rid of this brightness here. It's not looking right. And the bright parts looking a little too bright. So darken them up a little bit. Looks a little silly. Darken this part and a little here. It's not perfect. At least it has folds. take care of this part of the leg. So I don't really want to record the entire sprite making process. Obviously this is dark, like it's dark here. So I'm just doing the same thing, just in different spots of the sprite. 
so you should kind of get what I'm doing. I'm just adding the lighting the details in the sprite. I'm zooming out and in, checking it to make sure it doesn't look too bad. It's an iterative process, very boring, repetitive thing. Little by little, he starts looking better and better. So I'm tempted to stop recording and just show a before and after picture. And maybe go over how I touch up. But as you can see, what we started out with. was this and we're already pretty damn close to Quan Chi tutorial 2-2 two -two. so for this you'll see it's a little shiny here so we'll add some shine there using that dodge tool you want to kind of replicate a few folds here and that shiny part down here at the bottom etc etc always have a good reference image I'm probably gonna fix this belt if I ever do so that's how you Franken sprite and that's how I edit on top of an existing sprite to create a brand new character We'll add, like you we did here, you add the same kind of folds up here. I know I started and then kind of gave up, but that's what you do. You want to add those folds so it looks like he's wearing some cloth and not a tight, tight shirt. So those folds go down vertical, so you'd want to replicate that. But I'm going to stop recording because I've pretty much explained everything I do. It's just a matter of you sitting here watching me do it. That's going to take a while. That, that actually looks horrible. Uh, maybe I'll do a time lapse and you'll watch me and fast forward how I do it. But I can't sit here anymore. So... I'll just show you what I did similar before of my Shang Tsung the Quan Chi and you can see this gallery of all my edits so I did something similar in here where I was editing Quan Chi I mean Shang Tsung doing one of his moves and uh, resize method for his face slowly add in the details until you eventually get to something as you can see this blurry edging is not something you can use for Mugen I made my spikes using my resize method which wouldn't work for this but here I didn't even add folds in his cloth I, I used more detail on this armor thing So that's all I have for tutorial two. Uh, tutorial three will be making an arena, cut and paste, some perspective, some lighting and shading for that. Thanks for tuning in.